So here we go, the ascension of Jesus, when Jesus actually ascends up into heaven. What is actually happening in this story? Is it true? Did it actually happen? In Acts 1, verses 6 through 11, is the story of the ascension. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father is fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And we had said these things as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So what does this story actually mean for us? And is it true? And that's a big question. The true question is, is big. Uh, recently, Jordan Peterson did an, uh, an interview with Dawkins uh, Richard Dawkins, in which Dawkins keeps coming back to the fact where he says, Jordan Peterson, do you actually believe Jesus was born of a virgin and died on a cross and came back to life? Is it true? Jordan Peterson kind of hymns and halls. This is a very essential question to our Christian faith. It's an essential question to our Christian faith because it's the underlying question really is what type of world did God create? Did God create a world where truth and reality are bound together. So Jesus, when he goes up into heaven, he's actually showing us reality. He's actually showing us truth through reality. Jesus at this point has died on the cross, comes back to life, meets with the disciples several times. They verify that Jesus is alive. He eats with them, he talks with them. Doubting Thomas puts his hand in the wounds that Jesus has, and believes. All of these eyewitnesses' accounts are testifying to the fact that God created a world in which truth and reality match up. And so Jesus actually ascending into heaven happened, and it illustrates something about reality. It illustrates that Jesus was given authority to go to the right hand of God. This shows us that God works in certain ways, and then he shows us those ways through tangible gifts of grace that we can experience. This reminds me of God resting after creating all of creation, and he creates Adam, and then on the seventh day he rests. But you'll have to think back and go, which day was this for Adam? It's actually Adam's first day. So the first day that Adam gets is hanging out with God, and God taking the day off to show Adam in his grace all that he's created and how to enjoy it. What a gift. God did not need to rest at all, but he did that as a loving example to Adam. Hey, real quick, if you're getting something out of this, if this is helping you see these Bible stories in a little bit of a different way, and if you like studying the Bible with other believers, I really encourage you hit that thumbs up button on the video. That really helps a lot. And also subscribe and put a comment down below of what this story represents to you, what you get out of this story, what your thoughts on are, uh, your thoughts are uh, about what I'm saying about this story. Let me know in the comments what you think and get a conversation started. As Pastor Doug Wilson likes to say, Adam then represents us uh, as a covenant head. This also shows us how God operates. God created a covenant with Adam as the covenant head for all of humanity, all of man. And Adam represented us in sinning with the tree. And as Pastor Doug Wilson likes to say, he represented us well. Every man is sinful. This is what Jesus came to help with. This is what Jesus came to represent us uh, again through. After Jesus represented us on the cross by dying, he represented God's grace to us through living. He died so that we may die with him in our sinful nature, and he lived so that we may be raised through his sacrifice to glorify God. In ascending to the right hand of God, he's again giving a gift of grace. He gave us a representation of what was happening. He's showing us that we can take it to the bank 
that he's been given authority by God and he's actually ascending to go to the right hand of God, where God has given him all authority. So really this happens in a more real way than just floating up into the clouds. The floating up into the clouds happened, but it's the underlying uh, representation of a reality that Jesus is also giving us here. He's showing us that while this is what's happening, it's representing something more true that's happened, which is that Jesus has been given all authority. So this story is incredibly important, and I think one of the better stories to represent the fact that God created the world and reality to represent truth, that truth and reality are bound together, that this symbolism, the symbolic act that Jesus partook of and um, illustrated, just like God resting in the Garden of Eden illustrates something true, um, but that this ascension into heaven is Jesus illustrating to us that he has been given all authority, and that authority is to forgive sins, the, the things that he did in his life. He forgave sins. He gave life to people who were dead to represent us on the cross and be the perfect sacrifice that could atone for our shortcomings. All a gift of grace. This story, whether you read it in the gospel accounts, I think it's in Matthew and Luke, um, as well as in Acts, uh, is such a short story. It's such a short illustration, but it has so much impact because with this one story, it is giving the eyewitness account of people recognizing Jesus' gift to us and showing that God has given him authority uh, over everything. He has given him the seat at his right hand, the authority to, to forgive us our sins and to glorify God with all of it, everything under the sun, in heaven and on earth, and to enact God's sovereign will over all of creation. Not too bad for such a short story.